In this tutorial, we're going to create a yo-yo. At a larger scale, this same design can be a Diablo. Uh, the lesson we're going to focus on in this tutorial is mirroring. So, a lot to cover. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so let's get started. Find FreeCAD on your desktop, right-click on it and say Execute, or simply double-click it. Our first step is to let FreeCAD know we want to create a new do document. We can do that by clicking File and saying New, or simply clicking this icon in the corner. Now we can't get busy until we get our tools, and our tools are all inside these selection of workbenches. Uh, if you click on that and go to the Part uh, workbench, that has the selection of tools we need right now. Now the first object we want to introduce is a sphere, so click on the sphere object. The object will be introduced, but it won't be selected by default. You're going to have to click on it so that it's selected. Down below here, you can see the data values. If you don't see data values, it's probably because you're not on the data view value tab. Uh, if you click on the data view value tab right here, we can all make sure that we're all looking at the same thing. So click on the data value tab. The first thing we're going to change is our circle's radius. Uh, the radius determines how big this circle is. It's the measurement from the center of the circle to the outside edge. Change that value to 30. You might have noticed your circle got so big it fills the screen. We're going to fix that in a bit, but first we're going to change uh, whether we've got a full circle or a half circle. A full circle is 360 degrees around, a half circle is 180. Let's change that to 180. So now it's kind of hard to tell what we're looking at because our circle is so big. So the fix for that is this icon here, uh, which just should be to the left of all your different views, and it is a magnifying glass on a piece of paper. Go ahead and click that. What you can see now is we've created a half circle. Um, we're going to want to make a duplicate of that, so click on your sphere, and then right click on it, and go to copy and click on that. Now that we've got a copy in the computer's memory, which is called the clipboard, we can right click on it again and say paste. So do that. Right click on sphere one more time and click on paste. That will give us a second sphere, which, like all creations, isn't selected by default. So click on it to select it. Now we can change its data values. We want to make it uh, smaller. We're going to make it 2.5 millimeters smaller, so 30 minus 2.5 is 27.5, so change the radius value to 27.5. Now to see what we've done, we've got to change our view, so we want to change our view to, it looks like the front view, the front view is this one, so click on front view. Now in front view you can see our original circle, our sphere is the bigger one, the new sphere is the smaller one, and we're going to subtract the smaller one from the bigger one. And the first step to doing that is to click on the original sphere. You always click on the one you want to keep first. So click on sphere. Now to click on a second object without just switching objects, you got to hold down control on the keyboard. So hold down CTRL in the lower left hand corner of the keyboard and click on the other sphere. Then they should both be highlighted. If you're having trouble getting to this point, call your instructor over. But see if you can get them both highlighted by using control on the keyboard and make sure sphere is the first selected. Now that you got them both selected, we can use this icon here, which is our cut tool. It looks like a white circle over a blue circle. Go ahead and click on that. And now you can see we've got a hollowed out half sphere. So I'm going to show you something uh, that I want you to practice time and time again in different videos, and that's hold down shift on your keyboard and hold down the right mouse button on your mouse and then just start moving your mouse. And you can start pivoting this around so you can get a good look at your object from different angles. So practice that for this video slide and then we will make uh, the next steps uh, when we continue. Okay, so let's get us all looking at this from the same angle. Uh, click on the top-down view icon. Now everybody should be looking at the view of their half circle uh, as you see it here in this picture. Now what I want you to do is press down your mouse wheel as if it's a button. Uh, this will allow you to 
pan the screen, which is like moving the piece of paper that everything's drawn on. And I want you to bring your circle near the bottom. So do that, please. Now uh, select the cut by clicking on it. So go ahead and select on that cut. And we're going to make a mirror of this part. So it's selected. Um, then you're going to find the mirror icon, which is this icon right here. And just an FYI, you can also click on part and find mirror right here inside of part. But we're just going to click on the one here. So click on the one here right now. Now, mirroring occurs along panes, and uh, we've got our cut selected, so that's what's going to get mirrored. And our mirror plane is going to be either XY, YZ, or, oh, sorry, XZ or YZ. Um, let's get an idea of what that means over here. In your lower corner, you can see your panes. So if you want to mirror something, your mirror is always going to mirror on this side of two letters. So if you want to mirror something that's top to bottom like we want to do now, the only way to mirror that is to and have that on either side of two letters would be to be on the ZX plane or XZ plane. Now if we were doing left to right, the only way to be on the either side of two letters for that would be on the YZ plane. And if we were to go front to back, the only way to be on either side of two uh, panes that way would be XY. But we want to be top to bottom which you can see if I'm on the bottom I would be under XZ and if I'm on the top I would be under I would be uh, above XZ so th that's the two letters I'll have to choose here so after that long explanation I want you to choose the right plane to go top to bottom okay hopefully you guessed it it is the XZ plane is going to get us top to bottom and then we just have to click OK now what you should see here is we got our second piece, but it's mirrored on the wrong spot. It's mirrored here. So to change where something mirrors, just double click on the label for the mirror. So double click here. Then you'll get this widget to edit where the mirror is. And this is kind of important. I want you to click right in the center of this green thing with the arrows. Click on that. And when you click on it, hold your left mouse button down and you can drag this to the top. Uh, you should find that moving left to right doesn't work and that's what we want. We want to lock it in directly above and just move this to a point where they're just both touching and let it go. Now we got to turn this mirror editing off and the way we do that is just right click and go to finish editing. Still with mirror selected here you can see we've got something new something called a base and if I click on that I can open up the values so this uh, X value here we want to change that to zero if yours is zero already just leave it but if it's anything other than zero make that zero now now this Y value is uh, w what changed when we move this up above uh, we want to move it a little bit further apart um, you can experiment with this. Let's hit 33 and go check it out. And you can see now we've got a distance apart. This distance actually uh, doubles, so we increased it by 3, but we're going to have a distance between these two of 6. Um, go ahead and change this to 33 now. Now we're almost done. We simply need to introduce the piece that's going to hold these two together, and that's a cylinder, so click on that. Now, like all creations, it's not selected by default, so select your cylinder so we can manipulate it. Down in the data tab of the cylinder, I want you to make some changes. Let's make its radius 4 millimeters, and we'll leave its height at 10. To make our additional changes, we'll use the transform tool. So just find the cylinder, right click on it, then click on transform. We might have better control of our transform if we change our view angle. So let's view it from the right side. Click on the right side view icon, please. Here we can use the red ball. And if you move it, it'll tick once. We want it to tick six times. Two, three, four, five, six. Because 15 times six is 90, and that changes us by a 90 degree angle. Then we'll just bring this over and put it in between the two by dragging on the blue cone. Do that, please. 
Do this quick check to make sure you got it centered nicely. If you've got it sent, hold down shift and your right mouse wheel, uh, you shouldn't be able to see the cone, I mean the cylinder coming out into the inside of this one or this one if you got it centered correctly. If you do see it coming out, then just back it up whatever way you need to in order to uh, make sure it's centered. So that's your little check for this step. Please do that. Once you're happy with where it is, go ahead and click OK to end the transform. Congratulations, you've done your yo-yo. Um, also, at a bigger scale, this could be used as a, a Diablo. Um, but at the scale we pr uh, created it, it is definitely a yo-yo. We'll have to get your instructor to give you some string. Uh, go ahead and save it and export it. If you have trouble remembering how to do those two things, don't worry, we've got tutorials for that as well.